Well, the gun debate, as you know, has caused a huge political shakeup in New York's 23rd district, which will now cover the South Towns and the Southern Tier. Congressman Chris Jacobs says he's leaving Washington now after this term, after he came out in support of gun control. So right now we are joined by political analyst Carl Calabrese to talk about this. There's so much to talk about. Uh, we saw that flurry of activity in the 23rd on Friday. Very unusual what happened, although I guess it's getting less unusual these days. Um, and it continues today. We are being told that state Republican chairman Nick Langworthy is in the race for New York 23rd. Um, we're also told that Palladino, Carl Palladino, has enough signatures. He's in the race as well. Now, these are two men who have been very closely aligned in recent sure years with Langworthy supporting Palladino and so forth. Now they're going to go head to head in the primary next, next August. What, what will that look like? Oh, that, that will be an incredible match to watch because of the the contrasting styles of the two candidates. In Nick Langworthy, you have the consummate inside baseball state, player. Uh, I, I say that uh, admiringly and, and complimentary. He knows about politics, organizations. He knows about how to put together a winning campaign, all the components of it, fundraising, volunteers, messaging, strategizing, has it down. I mean, he has forgotten more about those things than, than most people will ever know. And then you got Carl Peldino. Uh, who's the classic a outsider. Outsider, populist, shoot from the hip. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be a really interesting campaign in terms of contrasting styles. All right. Now, Palladino said last week, late last week, that if Chris Jacobs dropped out, he was in the race. So Nick Langworthy knew that, and yet we're being told that he will be in the race. Why do you think he's facing off against Palladino? He wants to be in Congress. You remember, Nick came up through um, Tom Reynolds. He was Tom Reynolds' top guy. And uh, that's where he learned his politics and his political skills from one of the masters of politics, Tommy Reynolds. Uh, and so maybe he's always harbored the, um, the ambition to go to Washington. If he did, he kind of kept it hid pretty well. Most yes. people thought he was the insider, the, the organizational person. But uh, maybe he's gotten bored with that and wants more challenges. I don't know. I can only speculate. He's got to know how difficult this could be. Well, yes, but both, both men have their own sets of advantages. With Nick being state chair, he's probably got the support of all the county and town chairs in that district, I think 10 counties, which means that one of the most important aspects of winning a primary is getting the vote out, having people in the streets, making phone calls. On the other hand, so that's his strength. Carl ran in these 10 districts yes. in 2010, and I Googled the results back then. He ran against a, a congressman, a former congressman named Rick Lazio, if you recall. Sure. I looked at it. Carl Palladino won all 10 counties, usually by two and sometimes three and three yes. and a half to one. Now, I know it was 12 years ago, but there's still a lot of people around who... Well, that was going to be my question then, that you're saying you think Langworthy would have the support of all these county chairs, and yet they've watched... Paladino run in their counties and do very, very well. And not only that, but he didn't drop off the radar screen for 12 years. I mean, he's been very highly visible. Uh, and so people who remember him, who may have voted for him in 2010, have certainly seen and heard of him and followed him for the last 12 years. So again, there's two distinct sets of advantages. One is the insider being able to have the organizations to pull a vote out in August, strange time to vote. And the other, the populist who has people who's already voted for him. So again, from a political strategy standpoint, be a great, great race to watch. <laughs> You're getting your popcorn ready here. Absolutely. Now, we're not talking about Democrats in this race. Does a Democrat have any hope of winning in what is now a very, very red district? It's a very red district in what I think is going to be a very Republican year across the country. Uh, and so, it, I mean, you never say never in politics. Everything is, anything can be possible, uh, but it, it's certainly an uphill match. I don't think the Democrats are going to be able to, on a, to attract an A-list candidate uh, with money and name recognition and a record to go at this. Uh, I, I think it's probably going to be somebody they're going to groom for future races. All right, you watched what happened to Chris Jacobs. He said everyone who who had supported him withdrew their support once he announced his support for some form of gun control. Um, two questions there very quickly, because of course we're out of time, but two questions. Number one, does he have a political future? And number two, 
Can we hope at all for any compromise in this country if something like this happens to a sitting member of Congress? Well, your first question. Uh, Chris Jacobs, and I know him, I've been friends with him for years, is a very good man. Um, ethically, uh, very talented guy. Whatever he decides to do, public sector, private sector, not for profit, he's going to do well. Um, I think there's going to need to be some cooling off period before uh, he thinks about public office again, if he ever even wants to do that. Uh, the other issue is a tough one. Uh, both parties have their bases, their base voters that do not want to compromise on certain issues. For the Democrats, it's abortion. For, for Republicans, it's guns. And I, I said to someone the other day, this whole situation with Chris reminded me of the 1988 uh, Republican National Convention when George H.W. Bush said, read my lips, no new taxes. Went on to win that race. Two years later, he reneged on that pledge. At that point, his and political lost. career was done. He yeah. lost his base. That's what happens in this case. A congressman who campaigned as a pro Second Amendment supporter got support from Second Amendment groups, changed his position. Base voters don't take to that very kindly, and I think that's what you saw. So over it may the last not week. be the position so much as changing mind yeah. midstream. Okay, Carl, we could talk all day on sure. this, but thank, thank you, you so much thank for you. being Enjoy here. It. We appreciate thank your you. insight.